All right, so today I want to introduce you to the four most common ghosts in ball pythons. Now let me tell you, when it comes to ghosts, I say it's probably one of the more confusing topics that a lot of people kind of get mixed up between all the different ghosts. And today I want to cover the regular ghost, also known as the hypo, which is a recessive mutation. There's also the orange ghost, which is really popular. There is the desert ghost. A lot of people get the desert ghost confused with a combination of the desert and the ghost. In fact, it's actually just one single gene, the desert ghost. And I want to cover the true ghost. The true ghost is actually the combination of the ghost and the azanthic. So today I want to jump over the internet and I want to dig a little bit deeper into the four ghosts. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here at morphmarket.com and I wanna start with the ghost. Most people, when they talk about, hey, I have a ghost for sale, what they're actually talking about is this snake right here. It's actually a recessive mutation. You need two copies of the ghost for a visual. And if you actually do get a visual, essentially what it looks like, I've actually saw this description in one of the forums online. Someone said, if you were to ask me what a ghost looks like, it looks like someone took a can of white spray paint and just had like a dusting of the white mist on the snake. And that's kind of what it looks like. Someone like kind of sprayed it a little bit with a real slight dusting of white spray paint. It's kind of an interesting appearance. And here's what happens if you actually add hypo to another gene. So you can kind of get the idea of what effect it has. I actually pulled this one up here. Take a look at this. This is probably one of my favorite combinations working ghost into the mix. If you actually start with a really dark snake, it has an interesting effect. This is actually a super GHI with two copies of the GHI, which is is a really super dark snake. It's pretty awesome. And if you actually take Ghost, add it to the Super GHI, take a look at this. Look what the Ghost does. It essentially turns the black snake into kind of a charcoal gray snake. Kind of interesting. I've seen a lot of these. It's, it's pretty much the best way that you can make like a gray snake adding Ghost to a lot of your really dark combinations. And pretty much anything that's really dark, you could do it like, you know, with the Super Cinnamon or the Super Black Pastel or like the Super Black head you add ghost to it and you end up with a gray snake pretty awesome so so far it's not that confusing just looking at the ghost and then if you take a look at this this is where things get a little bit confusing this is actually the orange ghost and when it comes to all the different lines of ghost I'd say the orange ghost is probably the most popular you can actually come over here to morphmarket.com and do a search for orange ghost and you can get a whole bunch of different you know combinations and ball pythons with the orange ghost gene in it as a matter of fact, there's actually other lines of ghosts that aren't as popular. There is the yellow ghost, the green ghost, the butterscotch ghost, I've actually heard of that. I've also heard of the bell line ghost. There's all these different ghosts. And kind of the weird thing about the compatibility of all these different ghosts, if you actually go over on some of the reptile forums and look at some of the things people are saying, sometimes, you know, you, you kind of read stuff and you have to take it with a grain of salt because it seems like when you come out with these, you know, the, all right, this is the fact, this is how it is. In ball pythons, it seems there's always exceptions. I could probably talk to 10 different breeders and get 10 different answers for a a lot of these and I come to find out actually I actually produced a video on the orange ghost and, and I actually found a, a, a person over on one of the forums and they're like all right I bought an orange ghost I bred it to my ghost and all the offspring came out normal looking double hat for the different lines of ghosts indicating that they're not compatible so you know what I did is I read that I came over here and said all right the orange ghost is not compatible with the ghost come to find out it's a lot more complicated than that and as a matter of fact mo I'd say most of the the orange ghosts are compatible with your regular the regular line of ghosts so the hypo and the orange ghost are compatible in most cases although I have heard some people where they take an orange ghost they breed it to a regular ghost and all the offspring come out as double heads I've actually heard someone over on one of the forums they said they, they bought an orange ghost bred it into their orange ghost and they weren't compatible two different lines of orange ghost which is pretty crazy I've actually seen you know incompatibility between all the other ghosts, the green ghost and the yellow ghost and the belly and all that. So if you're actually buying into the ghost project, you have to be sure you have compatible lines of ghosts. That's probably the biggest thing. And I'd say overall, most of the times, from pretty much what I've seen, most people call this the common line of orange ghost, which is compatible with the ghost. And kind of the cool thing about the orange ghost is that it really brings out a lot of oranges in a lot of combinations, as well as the influence of the ghost. I actually pulled one 
coming up here, take a look at this. This is actually the clown. And if you actually notice in the clown, what I really like about the ghost in general is in a lot of combinations or even single genes, you'll see a lot of times a lot of pixelation or granulation in the sides of the snake. And the, the ghost really smooths that out in a lot of combos. I've done kind of, the ghost has really grown on me. It's a pretty awesome gene. And you'll notice a lot of times with the orange ghost, it'll actually bring out a lot of oranges as well as kind of reduce all the pixelation. So here's what happens to the clown if you add in the orange ghost. Take a look at this. This is pretty amazing. You get this really creamy appearance. It pretty much removes most of the pixelation on the side. Kind of reduces all the color and just gives you an overall creamy appearance in the whole combination. Pretty awesome. All right, so this is where some confusion can actually come in. This is the desert ghost. One single recessive gene, the desert ghost. Of course, it's recessive, so you need two copies of the gene for visual. And the desert ghost is confusing on many different levels. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'd say probably one of the biggest things about the desert ghost is you can actually have this the standalone desert ghost that looks like an azanthic, like this one. Look at it, it's almost completely black and white with all the color stripped out. And if you actually come over here to Morph Market, you can actually find the same exact gene, Desert Ghost, just by itself in a completely different appearance. Take a look at this. This is also a Desert Ghost. So some of them are super bright yellow and some of them are almost azanthic. As a matter of fact, I actually have Desert Ghost in my collection and it's, it would be kind of interesting to try to isolate it to see what the standalone Desert Ghost looks like without any other genes in the combination. It's kind of crazy. So actually, take a look at this. So this is, this is the influence of what the Desert Ghost can do on a simple combination like the pastel pinstripe. So this is the, the lemon blast, a combination of pencil pastel pinstripe. Really common combination. If you actually look at the kind of the pixelation, all on the sides is pretty pixelated, almost kind of like a dirty snake. You know, you notice a lot of these lemon blasts kind of have this. And here's what happens if you work in the recessive desert ghost into the combination. Take a look at that. It really cleans it up, really brightens it, makes a really amazing combination. And for some reason, it seems like when you work pastel into the Desert Ghost, you actually get a really super bright snake and it really cleans it up. So this is so this is actually the, the Desert Ghost, which is not really associated with the ghost. The ghost is completely separate. Although you could consider this another ghost. It gets really confusing. So as a matter of fact, uh, you can actually have a Desert Desert Ghost that contains two genes, the Desert Gene and the Ghost Gene, which is completely different. And the Desert, I'd say not a whole lot of people actually work with the Desert. When it first came out, it was really amazing, essentially what it was. It almost worked exactly like the Desert Ghost, except the Desert was a co-dominant. You could actually breed it to something else, and you could actually, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm not sure if it was co-dominant, because I don't know if I've ever seen a Super Desert. I think it might have been a dominant, which is, uh, you, I don't think you can make a, a, a super which is kind of interesting I don't think a lot of people have actually worked with the desert and when it first came out it worked just like the desert ghost making some really amazing combinations but instead of having a recessive where you had to deal with trying to get two copies of the gene in your combinations you could just breed it into your whole collection and right away you'd produce one copy of the gene which acted the same as the desert ghost I actually pulled this up check take a look at this this is gonna kind of blow your mind this is actually the desert which which looks really similar to the Azanthic line of the Desert Ghost. And come to find out, I was actually digging around over here, I actually found another desert that is really super bright yellow. It's almost exactly as the Desert Ghost, you know, pretty much across the board as far as being really variable from one to the other, from an Azanthic looking snake to a bright yellow snake, just as a standalone gene. And take a look at this, when you actually take the desert and you work it into the Lemon Blast, take a look at this, it almost looks like a Desert Ghost Lemon Blast, almost exactly the same effect. And you know, it, when it first came out, you know, people were going crazy over the desert because they thought it was, you know, the, like the Desert Ghost, except we didn't have to wait, you know, to, to get the heads and then breed the heads back together. You could just breed it through your collection to make 
like all these awesome snakes. Come to find out with the desert, the problem is with the females. The females do not lay viable eggs. Something with the, some, some kind of problem with the females. As far as I know, no one has ever produced uh, a female that had viable eggs from a desert. You can actually take the males and breed it through your collection, but the problem is, is all the females end up as being pet quality, which is kind of a bummer for the gene. Every now and then you'll see them over on Morph Market. You'll see some females over there too, and they sell them as pet quality only. Do not ever breed a female desert which is kind of unfortunate all right, so here's where things get a little bit more interesting. This is actually the true ghost. This is a combination of the Azanthic and the ghost. Just the, the ghost with two copies of the, the recessive ghost gene, which is a little bit confusing because we go through all these different ghosts. So the true ghost, it's kind of interesting. This is this is the VPI line of Azanthic. So it gets more complicated because there are several lines of Azanthic, some of which are not compatible. I don't think any of them are compatible. So you can actually take the VPI Azanthic, breed it to a TSK Azanthic, and you will get all normal looking snakes that are double head for each line of Azanthic. As a matter of fact, if you actually look at the description on this one, this one actually says, if you kind of scroll down here at the bottom, this says this is a true ghost, the yellow ghost line, which is not compatible with the orange ghost. <laughs> it gets it gets really confusing between all the other lines. You can actually have uh, you can actually have a TSK Azanthic orange ghost which would be another true ghost you could breed two group true two true ghosts together and you'd end up with all normal looking snakes because the axanthic lines are not compatible and the ghost lines are not compatible and where it gets really complicated for example i actually have um i actually have i bought a collection of snakes i bought two female lessers that were ready to breed full size in a whole collection and i actually got one of them as a possible head ghost which is kind of interesting and with one copy of the ghost, a lot of times you can see like a brightening of the color on the snake. And sure enough, I can actually line up my two lessers and one's a lot brighter than possible head ghost. So I'm thinking it's head ghost. And the problem is, is I don't really know which line of ghost that is. So if I actually breed it and produce some visual ghosts, the problem is, I don't know, you know, if it's the orange ghost, the green ghost, the yellow ghost, or what it's exactly compatible with until I start breeding it into other combinations, which is, is kind of the hard part about the ghosts and the azanthics. So take a look at this. This is actually a lesser. We can take the lesser and work in the true ghost. So we can see what happens with the true ghost. And the lesser is actually in the blue red leucistic complex. And usually when you when you mix in other genes in with the lesser, in a lot of combinations, the lesser will bring out a lot more colors and a lot of contrast and really brighten up a lot of your combinations. And here's what happens if you take the lesser and work it into the VPI true ghost. This is a, this is what you get. You get a lesser true ghost. Take a look Look at this crazy snake. That is pretty awesome. That is probably the best looking ghost that I've seen. It really gives you this gray ghosted out appearance. So if you actually take a look at this, this is actually the VPA, VPI line of Azanthic. So you have to know which line of Azanthic if you're actually breeding this. That, that's probably the number one thing. You want to know which line of Azanthic. And this also has the ghost. And sometimes it tells you what line of ghost and sometimes it doesn't. So this says this, this line of hypo is the common orange ghost line. So the common orange ghost line, I think, is compatible with just the regular line of ghosts. So this should be a really compatible line. And with the orange ghost, you can see maybe just a little bit of orange kind of peeking out from the orange ghost. It kind of brings out some orange in a lot of combinations. So take a look at this last one here. I wanted to show you this. This is actually a true green ghost. <laughs> it gets a little bit confusing. So the green ghost is another line of ghosts and you have to definitely check your compatibilities when you're working green ghost and yellow ghost and all the other ghosts. I'm not sure if this one actually says, this one didn't say anything about the compatibility of the green ghost with a lot of your other ghosts. So probably what I do is if you're buying into a ghost project, you probably want to contact the breeder and figure out what line it is and what it's compatible with because let me tell you when it comes to ghosts it can be really confusing all right so what is time for the question of the day and zach ham asks 
How do you know when your female ball python is ready to be paired up with a male? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I've actually seen some really big breeders. What they'll actually do is right before they pair them up, they'll go through all their females pretty much on a regular basis and do an ultrasound. And once the follicles, the immature eggs in the females hit about 10 millimeters, that is the point that they'll actually pair them up. And I've actually seen some people where they'll increase the feeding frequency and they say the increased food will actually stimulate follicle production. I've actually seen just kind of the opposite where a lot of people what they'll do kind of what I do is when it's October 15th you know pretty much the, the the hard set date of the year I'll actually pair up all my males and females and a lot of people will say pairing up actually stimulates follicle production where you actually get an increased size of the follicles so I'd say either way works pretty much what I do is I just you know pick one point of the year and I just pair up all my males and females and I kind of time it with most breeders I say most pre people actually pair up usually anywhere from October November or you know it's sometimes around sometimes even in September you know pretty much late in the fall so they have hatchlings in the fall the following year it's, it's kind of like the big craze in the fall <laughs> everyone's kind of rushing the reptile shows because that's when all the new hatchlings are out and the spring shows are kind of cool because a lot of times a lot of people don't have hatchlings in the spring and what you'll usually find is some of the stuff left over from the previous year usually your really high-end stuff that people are marking down sometimes you can get a pretty good deal and a lot of it actually has some pretty good size on it you know so you can get good deals in the spring and in the fall so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video